Real Country, 1430 AM and 107.3 FM, WRDN. I'm Brian Winnikins. Joining us uh, this afternoon is uh, Pepin County Health Officer Heidi Stewart. Get an update on the COVID-19. Heidi, thanks for joining us. Um, well, uh, we're still in a in a high level here in Pepin County, but I, I know Buffalo County is, what, in a critically high level or something like that? Yeah, so, you know, really with the start of school and bringing all the kids back together, we're seeing a lot of cases. Um, and we're seeing it spread amongst classrooms. We're seeing it spread um, then once it gets back into the household, amongst households. Uh, so, <clears throat> so rates are relatively high um, throughout the state of Wisconsin. Um, yes, Buffalo County is seeing some high levels as well. I'm hoping those start to plateau there a bit. Um, I can tell you that I almost want to knock on wood when I say this, but the last two days have been better than the previous week. So um, while we're still seeing, you know, six cases a day coming in, um, we did have a couple, a couple days where we had um, 11, 12 cases coming in, and that's really, really busy. Meanwhile, um, the Pepin School District, they, they're for their the, the school and the district, they are doing something where they're using metrics, and so they they kind of have like a floating, for lack of a better word, a floating policy. And so they, they they've do. actually moved up their policy to now include the, the requiring of wearing yeah. face coverings in the school during the day and lunches are served in homerooms and things like that. Yeah. Is, is that a, a is that actually a very good idea for not only schools, but really bigger businesses and that to have kind of that floating policy based on those metrics that absolutely, uh, get. absolutely. And if you look at the CDC and the DHS K-12 return to school plans or suggestions um, for plans, it talks about layered mitigation strategies. And, um, you know, when when community transmission is low and vaccination rates are higher, you can, you know, move about a little bit more freely than than when vaccination rates are low and community transmission levels are higher. It's really about amping up the mitigation strategies as the case rates go up. So, uh, Pepin, what they've done down there this week is a great example of, uh, you know, they tried, they really tried to not have to do the masks, um, but it, it wasn't working. They were seeing uh, at one point over the last month, they saw as many as 40% of their students or staff out um, not necessarily as a positive, but as a close contact. And some of the goals for school districts, uh, well, the goal for the school districts is to educate the children. Um, and to do that the most effective way possible, you need to have them in the classroom and learning. Um, and then our goal, ours, the health department and, and the community in general is to keep transmission of this uh, virus as low as possible. So, um, Hopefully the, the strategies that have been implemented there and the hard work that's being done um, in the other schools to, to physically distance <clears throat> and uh, increase vaccination rates, uh, we can hopefully uh, plateau here and then start to see a de decline soon. Booster shots, those are, uh, CDC said 65 and older now uh, can get them. So for what does that mean for you, the health department and those that are 65 and older, when can they start getting those boosters? Do you know? Yeah, so so there's a few things that I'm waiting for. Um, the CDC or the FDA has approved it. Uh, the ACIP committee meetings were yesterday and today. I think that it's pretty safe to say that we'll see, and I, and I wrote this down so that I could make sure that I um, shared all the information that I had, that it's pretty safe to say that we're gonna see a recommendation come from the Department of Health Services and what I would call our marching orders to go forward and then give this uh, booster vaccine. Uh, that for us needs to come from the Department of Health Services. It doesn't come directly from the CDC. So we're still waiting on that, which I anticipate will happen soon. Um, 65 uh, year old and up, um, they've identified that age group. They've identified long-term care facility and assisted living facility. Um, People in certain occupational settings, essential workers, um, that could be healthcare, other businesses where if you have to miss because of COVID, it would hinder um, progress in, in society, I guess. I would, they called it, it would, essential worker, if, if you're not at work, it would hinder societal functions. So um, 
that I need more definition as to who, from a health department standpoint, we're supposed to give it to. If you're an unpaid caregiver, somebody who's, who's immunosuppressed, you would fall into this category, uh, potentially uh, paid or unpaid who interact uh, within six feet of others. That was another category. So I need some more specifics on that as well. Congregate settings, homeless shelters, jails, um, those with underlying medical conditions, and there's a list there. Um, so really, we need some more specific details on who this all in, involves. And we will get that out and share that as soon as we can, just like we did when we did phase one and phase 1A and phase 1B and phase C and then phase two. Um, one of the other areas that I'm waiting to hear information on, if, if everybody remembers early on, <clears throat> Heike Pharmacy was one of the providers of the Pfizer vaccine here in town. Now this approval is for the Pfizer vaccine and I need to see if that third dose booster can be one of the other mRNA vaccines, which would been, then be, uh, can we give that to people who we gave to Moderna's to the, the primary series of Moderna to early on. Uh, the health department, the hospital early on, all we had was Moderna. So the largest portion of our population that would be hitting that six month plus mark would have been vaccinated in their primary series with the Moderna. So need to find out what that means. What about the flu shots? Are those underway? Those can be underway. Uh, yes, we do have. So just to remind the general public, um, the health department only provides uh, influenza vaccine for 18 and under through our vaccine for children program. Um, we chose to do that several years ago when we had access at our healthcare providers, uh, local pharmacies started providing it. Uh, we don't really feel like there's a need for us to compete. So we um, we targeted a different population, which was more of the school-based and then um, the six month and up. Um, so I have not talked to the pharmacy or the hospital yet, but um, I would encourage people to reach out to their primary providers to see if it's a right time for them. I had somebody talk to me last week and say, I called for my flu shot, but my provider told me to wait another two weeks. So, um, you know, Again, talk to your primary provider about what the best time for you to get it and where for you to get it and what type, because there are different types. So. Can, can we get both the booster and the flu shot close to one another yes. or do we have to wait? Yep, yep. they can be administered uh, at the same time um, without regard to timing of the different doses. So yes, um, you could schedule an appointment to get your COVID booster um, and your your influenza shot for this season at the same time. Um, I did read in some of the ACIP information today that uh, the side effects of this third dose, this booster dose uh, would, would most likely be similar to that of the second in the, in the series. So if, uh, if you had some, a sore arm or some aches after that second one, there's a good chance that unfortunately you could have that again with this. For me, fortunately on the second dose side, the best night of sleep I had in 10 years. So whenever I'm eligible for the booster, I'll be, I'll be getting a good night's sleep. I like that. That works for me. But meanwhile, Heidi, everyone just kind of needs to keep doing what we've been doing here to try and mitigate this down. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, really now is a time to, ramp up those mitigation things, you know, um, decreasing large group activities, um, sticking close to one specific cohort. Um, so in encouraging, you know, for example, children, um, encouraging them to stick to their same circles within school, out, outside of school, uh, same with adults at this time, thinking about your circles and keeping those circles small. Um, now would not be a good time this coming weekend to attend uh, a different event um, with large groups of people every single day. Um, that's just too high of a risk uh, for getting exposed and potentially spreading then to other individuals. It's not the direction we want to go. Heidi Stewart with Pepin County Health Department. You're listening to Real Country 1430 AM and 1073 FM WRDN.